Oh, hi. Um, you can see something is wrong with my car and I have no idea what it could be. And I think I have to see my mechanic so that he uh, can do a sufficient diagnosis. And diagnosis, this is the topic today. Um, I hope you will enjoy the short um, lecture I've made for you. And um, okay, so while I'm waiting, let's start. Welcome to Diagnosis in Endodontics. Today I'd like to talk about the basic principles of diagnosis and the tools you will need to. My name is Dr. Stefan Klinge. I work as a general dentist in Kiel, Northern Germany, but with a focus on endodontics. I'd like to thank Drew Shaw from Dentin and Tubules um, for the invitation and I hope uh, that you will enjoy the show. So, Let's get started. What is diagnosis? Why do we need it? The basic requirement for every doing, either medically or technically, is to know where the problem is and where it comes from. Hence, you have to search for the hows and whys to assemble the pieces into a whole. This requires a bunch of tools that will help to you to recognize the puzzles as part of the problem and requires imagination to put them on the right place. With technical issues, it might be sufficient to do some testing or try this or that. Since in medicine we deal with individuals, we have to go additional ways to gather information by also using the skill of questioning and listening. The purpose of any diagnosis is to uncover the main problem and to develop strategies to solve it. In the case of endodontics, this will lead not only to relief of pain, but also to a sufficient treatment and moreover to a complex treatment plan. For uncovering the main problem, it is important to have an unbiased view on the big picture by collecting as much information as possible. Medications, other diseases or psychosomatic issues can veil the truth and it is our quest to find the way through the maze. Let us have a short view on history on diagnosis. In the ancient world, Greece can be considered as the cradle of medical diagnostic. Mainly Hippocrates of Kos and Galenus of Pergamon were pioneers in it. Especially Hippocrates is considered as the father of modern medicine. <clears throat> as the first he observed the human body and made conclusions out of it. The Hippocratic fingers might serve as one example, where fingers look like drumsticks as a diagnostic sign of chronic superlative lung disease. <clears throat> Sorry. Furthermore, Galen's theory of the four tumors influenced the medicine within the 19th century. While the Islamic civilization rose to primacy in medical science in the Middle Age, in the European part of the world, the medical knowledge was lost after the downfall of the Roman Empire. It was the rise of the clergy that caused the foundation of thousands of monasteries where the medical service was restricted to medicinal herbalism. The cause of any disease was considered as divine and as the way to lessen the time in purgatory. There was no need for serious diagnostic because Diseases were sent from God, and no further explanation was necessary. 
From the 16th to the 18th century, the Old Greek and Arabic scientific work was translated into Latin, and this created new impulses to the medical science. Especially the arising interest of um, the human anatomy was responsible, responsible for rediscovering correlations between diseases and their causes. The recognition of cause and effect as a scientific phenomenon displaced the belief on divine provenance and slowly raised the art of diagnostic from its slumber. Until today, we have reached a high standard in diagnosing diseases. Especially with the help of high-tech medical equipment, we are able to diagnose almost all forms of sickness in their early state. Even in endodontics, efforts are made to improve the diagnosis of the pulp. Later, Doppler flowmetry detects the blood supply in the pulp, although it is still not ready to use daily, but it is a step forward. Or just think about the use of the CBCT to explore a tooth in all three dimensions virtually. So let us have a closer look on the diagnosis in endodontics and the tools we need every day on every patient. To do a diagnosis, you will need one thing most, information. The information is given to you by your patient. The information you need is the chief complaint. The chief complaint can be with or without symptoms. The patient might be able to exactly describe it, or on the other hand, it could be a bunch of several problems which cause pain or only a discomfort feeling. In the case of pain, patients often demand that you solve the problem immediately, but instead of a hasty and undirected treatment, you should perform your diagnosis step by step. This is even more difficult when the patient comes for the first time in between and with pain. You will need to know the dental history, which will often be incomplete because most patients can't remember the events which happened years ago. You will experience that even surgical treatments like a root resection are forgotten with the time as well as the last appointment for checkup. It's a popular beginning to ask the patient when the last checkup was. So you get an impression whether patients concern about their teeth or not, or whether they are extremely anxious. And you will have to record the medical history. It is a must in every medical field to record and know about the medical background of each patient. Not only to protect the patient against you, but also to protect yourself and your team members against unpleasant incidents or infections. Many patients take medications without knowing the reason. I often experience this, especially with older patients who not seldom are slightly mentally confused. How will you get this information? Several options are present. Forms. An easy way to get information about the medical and also the dental history are forms. Your patient can fill out the form while waiting to be next. And before you see the patient, you can check the form and you will have a first impression what the reason of his consultation is. But you always should be aware of disagreements, mistakes and even lies. And never forgot to let the patients sign it. A very powerful tool is questioning. If performed right, you will get a lot of valuable information and additionally, you can check the accordance with the form. Be aware that with your way of questioning, you could provoke answers that a patient might believe you want to hear. Avoid to ask suggestive questions that prompt a supposedly wanted answer. But we will come back to it a little bit later. Listen to what your patient tells you. The information is frequently inaccurate, but you can translate it in medical terms for yourself. 
but withstand the enticement to teach the patient. You will not have to prove your superiority, the patient already know it. The art of listening has to be practiced every day, particularly the self-control not to interrupt the patient's narration is very important. In many cases, the chief complaint or the main reason why the patient comes to you is already visible. Extra oral swelling or a painful facial expression will tell you in the moment the patient enters the room. But also he or she is only here to see you for an advice, a second opinion or was referred from a colleague. The patient will tell you. The first question begins with a why or what or how. How are you doing today? Why are you here? What can I do for you? This opens the quest and in the course you will get pieces of a puzzle. And it is your work to put them together. But as I will tell several times in this lecture, avoid to be biased by the first impression. Things are often different as they appear. The medical history is the most important information. It will tell you about former or actual diseases, about medications, allergies or other things you must know before you begin any kind of treatment. Probing the pocket death, for example, could be harmful to the patient if he or she has organ transplants. Always double check the form which the patient filled out earlier and compare it to that what the patient tells you. The medical history gives you a clue about the diagnosis and your treatment if there will be any. You certainly experience that a disease or even a medication mimic a dental pathosis. So until you do not have all puzzles together, be aware of a rash diagnosis which could turn out as false. Avoid to be biased, but recognize it as a part of the whole. For example, a patient comes to see you because of severe toothache. He cannot identify the tooth which hurts. He talks about the whole right upper or lower jaw. The medical history shows that he suffers from a depressive disorder. Fortunately, the patient honestly checked the box